Hey, what's going on everyone? In this video, I'm gonna give you a very, very, very short introduction to why I personally moved from an ops role and career track to a DevOps career track um, and why all the industry kind of pressures that led me to do that um, have only increased since then. So I think it's even more relevant now than when I made the switch years and years ago. Companies that have operations teams that are separate from dev teams, almost always, always that I've seen, the operations team is on the wrong side of the balance sheet and the dev team is on the right side of the balance sheet. The operations team is OPEX. It's seen as an expenditure that the company should try to minimize just about any way possible through outsourcing, through just cutting positions, through giving people the opportunity to do more varied work by giving them seven jobs to do because we fired all those other people. It's rough and generally uh, you're just seen as an, an expense to minimize for, you know, what's the minimum of ops people we can have? How small can that team be to still sort of reasonably reliably take the golden egg that dev <laughs> drops every few weeks and bring that into production and then just do what's needed to keep that running, right? That's simple stuff. Yes, you can rage that that is a brutal, unfair, deeply wrong, stupid uh, misunderstanding of what ops is all about. You're not even leveraging the skill set that ops folk, modern ops folk have, which like totally includes programming um, and uh, a knowledge of a lot of the environments and systems that developers are working on. Yes, you can say all that, but it's not going to change reality where you're simply on the wrong side of the balance sheet. They're going to steal from the ops side to pay <laughs> the dev side because dev is capex where they're working on products, right? This is how we make money. We want to grow that team. The more devs we have, the more product we can crank out, the more features we can crank out, the more bugs we can fix, the happier our customers will be, the more money we'll make, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I hope that you can see how, how painfully clear it became that, you know, the, the self-interest of the company just doesn't work that way with ops people. Like it will, you know, the app will continue running even harder if, if we pay the ops team more. Like that's not a discussion that gets had a lot. Again, there are good, ops gigs out there and I'm not saying there's not but that was my driver for moving over into DevOps because DevOps really to me and I'm getting a lot of hate for this I know because I'm oversimplifying what DevOps even is even though no one can really definitively tell you what it is because it's a million different job roles and it's actually a philosophy but everyone forgot about that even the people that signed the DevOps manifesto back in the day which I did you just skip all that and just say DevOps in, in many ways, not, this isn't entirely true, but in many ways is simply a rebranded operations. They took ops, <laughs> brought it over the right side of the balance sheet. We're like, hey, we should probably work with devs a little more since we share a lot of the same skill sets and are trying to pursue the same goal, which is quick, stable, reliable rollouts for, for code and, and reducing the time it takes to make changes, working together with our fellow humans to make a better product, right? That's like a lot of the philosophy. And DevOps, you can, you can try to fight the MBAs and the finance people and the, and the, you know, the, the people in charge of your company, the executives from your ops, you know, fortress over here and just try to control the bleeding, or you can come over to the DevOps side and the branding has been done for you. The MBAs and their little magazines, you know, the Harvard business review writes about, you know, how DevOps folk enable the developers, add leverage and like supercharge the work that's being done there and let you produce even more with essentially the same amount of developers because they're removing all these roadblocks and blah, blah. Like the branding's been done for you. Just go over there. It's largely the same skill set, although yes, it is a different way of thinking about things. We'll deal with that in the next video. But largely, if you were a good ops person, like it transfers just fine and there's there's minimal additions you need to make. You can go with largely the same skill set and uh, probably almost double your salary in a few years. So there's very, for me, for me, and it's, I can only speak for what was right for me and I would do it again. For me, it was right to move over from a, a very ops focused career track, very smaller focused, like Linux engineering, networking, debugging, troubleshooting, cloud, infra moving much further over to a, a DevOps role where I'll say the primary focus is not on the infrastructure, but on 
on delivery, right? On helping a dev team, enabling a dev team in a self-serve way to deliver their software many, many times a day, hundreds of times a day if they want to. And getting human roadblocks and just roadblocks in general, process, management, et cetera, out of the way so that the spice can flow, so that the software can flow uh, out into production. Becoming an engineer doing that is often much more satisfying also to me than being on the ops side because of all those organizational and philosophical kind of hurdles that you run into on the ops side. So this, this video, I, I had to make it because I have to position like why I moved and why I tell other people to move and why I think it's, it's worth it. And it's worth it even more now than it was seven or eight years ago when I did it. If you have relevant experiences, and I think a lot of experiences are relevant, even those that contradict what I'm saying here, uh, please leave them below. I think people would really benefit from uh, just hearing more perspectives about this stuff. DevOps itself is a thing that is just, I feel almost crazy making videos without trying to come to a specific definition, but I know how crazy it would be to try to actually define DevOps. Um, Every, every foundation, every presentation, every thought leader I've heard talk about DevOps, I like vehemently disagree with some part of their definition. And I, I imagine, unfortunately, it's like that for all definitions of DevOps. It's a human problem in the end. So please share your experiences below, share your experiences in ops, share your experiences of moving from ops over to a DevOps role or even like a dev role, uh, kind of onto the other side of that balance sheet. I think more people than you would think are, are thirsting to know uh, about your experiences. So thanks for watching everybody. This, uh, it's in the frame now. I'm trying to hide it. It's, it's a, it's a big old script for the next video. Uh, but I just had to make this one first because, um, it really sets up the motivation for, for all the practical things I'm going to tell you in the next one, which are like, how do you actually make the jump from ops to DevOps? Well, I've thought about that and I've asked a lot of people. See you in the next one. Peace. You know what I should have said? You gotta be like the turtle. Be like the turtle in Finding Nemo. That's what you gotta be. Why are you trying to impose your will on management from your tiny ops fortress? Why are you trying to do that? It just sounds painful. Just cruise on over. There's a wave leading you over to DevOps. You just, you just surf, you just surf over there.